Hey, Chris Manning here from the Locked On Cavs podcast, back at it after a weekend away. I hope everyone checked out Locked On Browns, frankly, after the, the Browns Chiefs game from Sunday. We're back today, though, talking about Denzel Valentine, talking about Lowry Marketing and Ricky Rubio's media availability. That's all coming up today on your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Tuesdays on Locked On NBA. It's East meets West with Wes Goldberg, Warriors Beer reporter for the Mercury News and host of Locked On Warriors, and Dave Vermeil, host of Locked On Heat, and also one of my favorite writers covering the league, tackling the biggest NBA stories of the day coast to coast. Follow the Locked On NBA podcast wherever you get your podcast, probably where you're listening to Locked On Cavs right now. <laughs> You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, back at it. Tuesday, September 14th, Locked On Cavs. I'm Chris. He's Evan. Evan, how are you, buddy? I'm good. We are three weeks away from the Cleveland Cavaliers playing basketball again. <sighs> Two, can I can I just I want to say off the top, obviously it'll be fun. I'll get in the rhythm, all that stuff. A little I, I could use another like two weeks. I could use like Chris Manning like, is putting his two weeks notice on the Cleveland Cavaliers three weeks uh, before the season begins. Uh I'm trying to think of who, what's like a number in the forties that I could who's like a cab that were forty like Sean Kemp a number of days away Tyler from Zeller forty days away. Yeah, yeah. I need I need like that amount of distance. You can go uh, Clippers training camp invite. I ha- Isaiah Hart and Dimes. Um, crazy. The Clippers are about to have Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Nikola Jokic on the roster and, at the same time. And Jason so, Preston. Are you kidding me? Jason Unbelievable. Preston. My my yeah. guy. Um, but yeah, it, I'm good. All things considered, so a little sore, as you may know. I'm. Uh, it's my personality at this point to share that I race develops on i'm still raising money for that if you guys want to donate uh, by all means it's open until halloween i think i hit my goal like a few days before the race so thank you again everyone who donated but at the same time still need more money to beat cancer but um i'm gonna share this with you off the air but what Nicki minaj just said for like her anti-vax conspiracy like tweeted at quarter to six tonight is just absolutely bonkers i'm sending it to you right now this is why the best okay uh shots of the sea chat gotta tell you evan uh i, I just want to say i is it tell me this you think is an accurate statement and then we'll talk about denzel valentine if there was one of us more likely to get into an altercation with conor mcgregor on the vma's red carpet it would be you right yeah um i think it's pretty clearly you it's not me i'm that's just not i i feel like if you were just a little wrong mood wrong day you know had a couple you know it i'm just kind of just there you're projecting me. on me a little bit here, aren't you? I just feel I just feel like I'm right. I just feel like I'm right here. I'm a non-confrontational person face to face. Yeah, but I'm saying like, if there one of us is going to be provoked, I think it'd more likely be you than me. Oh, yeah, especially if I had a few drinks and I'm a little bit more edgy. Let's put it that way. Um, if somebody wants to scrap and like if somebody, let's say like somebody was talking shit to my boy Chris Manning, I'd defend his <laughs> honor. No hesitation. Yeah. Evan, Evan just shoots double legs and then snacks on some brie. But uh, let's, no, dude, let's talk about that. Mixer, that five point takedown. That's called a oh, home okay. run move in high school. The, 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 the movie, uh, the, the movie, the movie Vision Quest was actually about Evan, but hopefully his lat pull downs are better than Matthew Modine's in that movie. If you know, you know, if you don't know, you know um, I you know, I know. Okay, yeah, the lot just think unbelievable stuff in that movie that he can't do level. Best, Let's talk about the best Valentine. wrestling content you can consume though is for sure Glow on Netflix. I love me some gorgeous ladies of wrestling. It's a great show. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about Denzel Valentine. Cav signed him to a two year contract, first reported by your our friend and, and yours, Chris Fudor of Cleveland.com. Um two year deal, second year I believe is not guaranteed. This is sort of funny because Dude, did you uh, there was like the dude. fact that I found out before Sean Strania. I think Fedor just got it out like 30 seconds before me. Do, do, do you mean? Well, I, 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 okay, me here's the thing. You know, I'm not using the socials. You didn't tell me this. So, like, this is just you. You Bro, know that I was. You know, I was said doing the Utah things. Jazz and literally the namesake of three. Uh, one of the name words in our namesake, David Locke himself, congratulated me on it. He's just like, "Good job on the scoop, Evan." And I'm like. 
Wow, thanks, David. You acknowledge me for once. Include me in the email chains going forward. Wow, shots fired. Um, this is going to okay. give me that intervention yeah. that they've been talking about. Oh my God. Evan, you know that I was like not exactly like I was occupied. Oh, yeah, you were. Um, to be fair, Feed the Swords right up on it was like 45 minutes after the facts. I, I kind of assumed, like I saw it, tweeted it, answered an email, closed my laptop, and I'm like, I kind of assumed Chris was going to write about it. And well, here's the thing. Some of you, you, you need to text me. I am living a more offline life. Um, I was busy this weekend. Some of you need to prod me a little bit. Get the cattle prod out via text and, and shame me into doing my job. But Denzel Not Valentine. Manny I prodded, but okay. Oh my God, I gotta Ashley Bastard, if you're listening, come take his job, please. I'm begging you. Um Denzel please, Valentine. Please release me. Actually, no, that's <laughs> not true. I'm no, having you, a great you, time. I love locked on Cavs. This is great. So do I. So do I. I you're, you're trusting me right now. So Denzel Valentine, late of the Chicago Bulls, played obviously at Michigan State. So we've got that that Michigan State quota here. Um Hey, if he wears 45 for the Cavs, you could put it in your Denzel Valentine's day notice to extend the <laughs> yes, season. Yes, yes, yes. 27 uh, years old will be 28 relatively soon. Um, 6'6", again, on a pretty affordable contract. Some of the the key kind of advanced stats from Lester that I think are interesting. Um, 0.72 assist users ratio, very low turnover percentage, in the 83rd percentile of wings last season. Pretty good assist percentage, 80th percentile of wings. I think competes on defense, has at least good size. The problem is, you know, as a shooter, um, he's in the bottom quarter of, of wings and three-point shooting at 32% from the field. Um, notably, even 31% on, on corner threes, 35 on corner threes. Uh, is not good at the rim either, so there's not even like a slashing component to his offensive game. 61% at the rim um, last year, which was the best mark of his career by a good 4%, and that, that was still in the bottom 50% of wings. So, like, this is not a a massive, I think, like, upgrade uh, for the Cavs' wing rotation, right? Like, I, I understand how you get here. I will, you know, again, like, I will just blanket statement insert here. Don't pay Kevin Love all the money you paid him a couple years ago. You could have afforded, like, an actual wing upgrade this summer in some capacity. Like, you, you could have theoretically done that. But, like, as far as consolation prizes go, like, I don't hate this. Um... I, I understand it. I kind of wonder if like, I, I know they had him before in the house and maybe they're, they, they, it just didn't work then. And they didn't want to go back to like, I think Timothy, the wall Cabrero is like a little bit more interesting to be a little younger, kind of played more meaningful basketball last season. As a Frenchman, um, I like the connection. Yeah, obviously. But you know, I, I tend to think this is fine. I, I don't have yeah. like, I, I, I mean, notably, like Damian Dotson also like is is now has been waived his non guaranteed contract off the book. So like, Valentine's probably better than Dotson. Not a better shooter, but probably better at other stuff. He's bigger, but like, eh, I don't I don't think He's this is like a, a game changing thing. That's the one thing Denzel Valentine is better at Damian Dotson at for sure. But I agree with you. I mean, if you had the power of hindsight, I'm sure. If you you do have the power of hindsight, I'm sure if you ask the Cavs front office, they regret giving Kevin Love that extension. Um, Kevin doesn't regret it financially, but I think career wise, he regrets it. Um, but there's worse signings that could have been made. I guess the Cavs could have thrown more money at Isaiah Hartenstein and not brought in a player like Denzel Valentine. Like a wing upgrade was an obvious need. They addressed three point shooting with Larry Markinen. They addressed a backup point guard finally behind Darius Garland and Ricky Rubio. I guess they addressed wing depth by bringing in Denzel Valentine more than anything. If you're Jetty Osman and you lose out the backup small forward job to Denzel Valentine or even Dylan Windler, uh, I think Lamar Stevens, if his shot isn't completely busted this season, has a pretty sneaky good chance of getting those back up three minutes. But if you're Jetty Osman and you lose out to either Denzel Valentine or Dylan Windler, but we're focusing on Denzel Valentine right now, your NBA career is at rock. It's lower than rock bottom at that point. It's it's like you're in Minecraft and you hit bedrock, but you have um, creative mode on and you just kind of break through and you're just endlessly falling after that. Yeah. All right. Let's take a little break. We'll come back. Let's just talk about the, the wing rotation a little bit. Then we'll get into some of the media availability stuff um, after that. But first, got to tell you. Well, let me let me check. I think the order here, Evan, is actually you got to tell everyone about our friends at Sweat Block. I do. I do. I do. And Chris, real quick before I tell you about them. Did you know they're currently the number one antiperspirant on Amazon right now? Yes, because Nick has had told us and that's wonderful for them. 
it is wonderful for them and it's probably thanks to you guys and maybe me because i wear it all the time i love sweat block and as some of you guys know i'm a pretty sweaty dude and there's nothing in life that is less fun to talk about Actually, there's probably quite a few things that are less fun to talk about, but either way, ad read. Some of you may know that I personally have dealt with excessive sweating. When I speak in public, I can't help but sweat through my shirt. Now, listen, I know this isn't life and death, and there are much worse problems in the world, and let's be honest, in that moment, it feels like a big deal. Like, honestly, this is worse than finding a worm in your apple kind of situation. Nobody likes to pit out during an important speech, interview, or first date, God forbid. I'd much rather not worry about it, and that's why I use Sweatblock antiperspirant wipes. Sweatblock is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You simply apply it at night before bedtime, go to bed, and the next morning you wake up, wash, and go about your day without worrying about sweat, guaranteed. I know this will sound too good to be true, but I literally only have to use Sweatblock once or twice a week, and it keeps me dry the whole time. No more pitting out. No more picking my shirts based on what will hide sweat better. I can even wear gray. If you or someone you love is dealing with this, you have to check out Sweatblock. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on or at Amazon, where it's currently number one. I don't know why I said Amazon so weirdly or CVS. Also, want to tell you about our friends at DirecTV who are trying to bring a TV together. You obviously, everyone has. You know, you're watching t your one device where you're watching the game. Another lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone. And you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff when you're trying to watch like the Harley Quinn HBO Max show, right? But, well, I want to say about it. Oh, wait. Great show. Unbelievable show. Comic adaptation comes out this week, and its continuation is very good. Anyway, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, t and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. And your content varies by the package. Okay, Evan. So here, here is, again, the Cavs now winger rotation. Isaac Coro is going to all but likely start a small forward um barring like an injury shocked. or something yeah i mean yeah. i think unless like he has like an injury and is like out for like a little bit at the start of the season like he's going to start a small forward so then your backup situation you're, you're in this position where obviously i think like the the one of the interesting things of the nance trade that, that i will be worth following is like that potential like avenue to shore up wing minutes is now off the roster right like you could have theoretically like use it as like a band-aid as him as a three and, and try to like, if you're not happy with Jetty or, or Windler or now, or Denton Den the Valentine, you're still, I think really just banking on like one year. You're, th these are stop gaps, right? Like at best Denzel Valentine is like a two year stop gap. Um, at, at like Jetty has two years left in his contract. This is a really make it or break it year for Windler. I guess if I had to ask you right now, if you had to bet on one of these guys like mattering or at least being passable for, for JB Bicker staff and, and the coaches, like if you're going to say one guy is going to look at least competent enough to be that backup three, who do you think it is? Lamar Stevens, just because it may not be. So be, but here, there's, do, there's do you consider him? As, do, do you consider him? Cause I, I almost, I think that is an interesting answer, but the caveat I would have is that if you watch how he was used last year, particularly on mm -hmm. the offensive end of the floor, he was playing the four. He was – the way the Cavs' offense worked, he was operating at the elbow. He was diving to the rim. They were specifically pushing him inside in a way that was not exactly like, hey, he's a he's a pure wing. If that's different, I think that's like a great answer, and I, it's kind of the one I'd be most interested in seeing because he's got the frame. But I would want – it's the, the shooting concern, and Valentine has the same concern, absolutely. Like that's, that's completely the, the concern with him. I'm, it, there, there's warts, I think, on every one of these options. I think is sort of the problem here. Yeah, um, there are warts. If you look at it from just a pure offensive standpoint, I think I'd have to say Jetty Osmond, unfortunately. But I just think Lamar Stevens feels like a safer answer. In theory, again, shouts to Carter Rodriguez. I think this is a very good point. Uh, in theory, adding Lowry Market into the fold here, and you maybe hope Evan Mobley is a competent enough shooter, you can make Lamar Stevens work more at the three if you put Garland and Sexton alongside them too. Maybe Rubio to an extent because Rubio isn't, an awful, awful three-point shooter. He's not great, but he's not like horrendous either. But um, 
at the same time, it's just, I think Lamar Stevens plays hard on both ends of the floor, especially on defense. And if you're looking at a JV Bickerstaff coach team, he wants players that play hard, especially on defense. And I think if you look at it that way, Jetty Osmond regularly getting the hook towards the end of last season where they would just bench him straight up for multiple games. I mean, he was, he was, too, yeah, he was straight up just like in purgatory for weeks. Yeah, and Lamar is kind of the antithesis of that. He plays hard on both every both ends of the floor. Every single possession he's out there, there's been plenty of highlights where you say, okay, the Cavs might have a little something here, but he's he's a long, he has a long way to go in terms of shooting. And I think he still does have a long way to go in terms of shooting, but I have kind of thought about this for a while, but ever since JJ Outlaw more than outright said, and Lamar said the same thing during media pre-Vegas Summer League availability, bit of a mouthful there, but... They want to use Lamar more at the three, have him act as an offensive initiator. I don't think that really works just because I think part of that plan is because the Cavs didn't really have a true point guard on their summer league roster. But at the same time, that's what preseason's for, too, and training camp. You see if Lamar really can work at the three. If not, maybe you're a bit more concerned because, like I said, the offensive answer is Jetty Osman. But let's say Denzel Valentine even outperforms him. You have to be very concerned about Jetty Osman's pro- NBA prospects going forward, and you maybe need to reevaluate the market and see if you can grab a more stable option on the perimeter. I mean, I think you're already there. I think you're already like unsure of Jetty's. Like last year was like oh, absolutely are, like, red, but, red red flags galore. I think maybe a couple I think, months removed, maybe some times over time overseas. I think I I can't tell with his Instagram. I don't know if he got married or not, but maybe that will. I don't think he got married. I think he just was going to lots of weddings. I think as uh, if you translated the caption. Uh, I I didn't you, have the come on, Evan. You that. work for the company that owns Instagram. And you don't even I unbelievable. They verified oh. me at 300 followers. And yeah, you caught like, her. <laughs> but um, here's, here's I think the like, offensive answer. But I think Lamar is the more interesting one. And I think if his shot isn't completely busted, you go with him. And that I think he's the fun option, too. And Bill DiFilippo, if you're there, I, I recently moved. So I haven't been getting your checks in the mail lately. That Buka money, man, give me some of it. Um. I kind of wonder if they're going to, if by like just, if, if JB looks at this team and says, we need any kind of, sh-, like, the, the how they balance some of these lineups is going to be so fascinating because, like, I, I wouldn't count Rubio as like a plus shooter. And, like, you need, like, it, we don't know what Mobley shots are like. Like, Allen's not a shooter. Marketing can only, like, cover for so much. And if we're, if we're talking about him, like, providing spacing next to a wing who can't shoot that well, I'd much rather pair him with Okoro. Right. Like I'd much rather use like because Okor is much more developed as a slasher, much more developed as a guy who can attack closeouts and punish guys with via sloppy closeouts if you can move the ball well. I wonder if we get to I, I think all of these guys are probably gonna get some kind of shot at some point. I think you're gonna see a lot of stuff just thrown at the wall here and it's gonna be kind of a revolving door. I, I mean, think the most fun out- have some kind of shot, but a lot of them yeah, not yeah. make it from three. I think the most interesting option for me in that sense is Dylan Windler because you if Windler can watching right now you just watch Chris Manning p- process that punt in real time blink and then yeah and just, and just glare um <laughs> I I think I think the most interesting answer if like you can if he can just like make threes is Dylan Windler because like they just the Cavs are like still well, screaming for the, like one. I it's more on the Cavs they didn't use Dylan Windler properly. Yeah, but, but it's not even just that. It's like him. yeah, but the, I think Dylan just also looked like shook. He looked shook to me last year, and like oh, I think some so of that is like and he I had deer watching he, him go he did, for a Yeah, dunk. he he had, like I think like coming back from the injury, I think like a lot of time away. I think it was a weird year. I, like I I think there's like a lot of things that you're just like really didn't help him and i think this is like this is a make or to break a year for him um i think if he can come in and be comfortable and like shoot well and do the thing that we think he should be able to do mm-hmm. then like i think he might just be the answer because like the Cavs are so desperate for spacing and most every other guy they're going to play like that's like not one of the two guards it, like okoro mobley allen like if those are going to be a lot of your tentpole pieces and then you have Rubio, who's like maybe not at his apex defensively anymore, or athletically, but smart defender knows what he's doing. Like, we'll talk about Ricky because I got some spice from his media deal. We'll yeah, I, yeah, we'll take a break here. But I, I, I think like Windler is just like the one where I'm just like, if I can like coax him to shoot, 
and like compete on defense and like rebound, which she showed he could at least do at like a passable level when he's in the little bit he's played. Like I kind of want to just like see what that would look like. Um, Jetty is the one where I'm just like, there's like, okay, this is the categories I put them in. Lamar is the athleticism and defense bet. He screams to me. He's a very JB Bickers F player. Valentine is like the veteran who's just like, we have, we need just someone who like, isn't going to be like overwhelmed by this. And like, well, it's going to be pretty level headed project. Do you hope he works well, out if it doesn't, but it's, doesn't. I, I, but it's not even that to me. Cause I think Exum was still like 23 year old in the Cavs got him. Valentine is like in his prime, so to speak. And is like been around a little bit. It's just like, he's that just like, true. okay, like he's, he's like the average. And we're just going to like Jared Allen for Denzel Valentine. Correct. It's like, you're just going to throw Valentine out there and be like, okay, like he's not going to like totally fail out there. Right. Like that's what you're going for. Jetty is like, okay, he's going to be the well-rounded option. If things go even for him and Windler is going to be the sharpshooting option. Mm-hmm. All these guys, I think provide something different. They're a different flavor. They're a different energy. Like I, I'll be curious to see like how they kind of handle this. And some of them like may play minutes at the two as well. I mean, like that's the other part of this. Like some of these, like it could be more than one of these guys. I mean, you're going to see some sex in it, a lot of sex in it, the two, obviously, but there's going to be other minutes to fill there. And like, there's a lot of how this develops that I'm very curious to see how JB handles it. But Evan, we got to take one more break. We do. This wing rotation. We're going to probably, we'll probably still be talking about this four man kind of weave, like in February or March or something, something cataclysmic, but you got to tell everyone about our, our friends at rock auto. We do. This episode of Locked on Cavs is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Winder often pointless or seemingly intimidating questions and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why spend up to 30%, 50%, or even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership. Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years, and their prices are reliably low and for every customer. They have everything you need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find a solution for your auto parts needs. So if you're interested, go out, check out rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, locked on, and their how did you hear about us box they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Check them out today at rockauto.com. All right, Evan, let's talk about some of the media availability. Let's just start with Lowry because you spoke to him before his media availability. So what did he say to you? And then what did, what was your takeaway from what he had to say when he, uh, on, on Zoom the other day? Uh, he's not a man of many words, that Lowry Markin. And I think a lot of it is the language barrier and him kind of interpreting things. I think it's because... Ours is on a phone call and he was in the middle of moving from Chicago to Cleveland and the connection at Cleveland Clinic Courts is also spotty in terms of his media availability, but he was kind of not really, he's just kind of giving non-answers for a while. Like Theodore opens up every single press conference when it comes to Cavs media availability and Lowry's just kind of giving Blase non-answers and he shared with me um, one of the reasons why he signed at the Cavs uh, other than the fact he jokingly told me he wanted to come to Cleveland because one, there's no traffic on the highways and two, the disc golf community is huge here and he said he's excited to see the sport sport flourishing in Cleveland and um, but he told me he like he, I feel like I can play free and play to the strengths of my game something I never really got to experience. He, not I, he never got to experience toward the ends of his time in Chicago because he enjoyed playing under Jim Boylan as the assistant. But when Jim Boylan became the head coach, things going a little bit different. Not, there. As, not, not on the leadership, not on the leadership council, Larry marketing. No, no, it's not on the leadership council. And then, uh, the, the other issue is, is like they sell, dealt with setbacks then. And then the year Chicago hosted all star, the bulls kind of trotted out Larry and Zach as the fate Levine as the face of the Chicago bulls and hopeful options for all star weekend. Um, I think Zach was a representative for the bulls technically for the all star game. But Larry wasn't even close. He's having a frustrating year. And I think they just kind of crystallized him and try to force him to play a specific role where they're like, okay, you were just a three point shooter. You cannot bang with dudes in the post or things like that. And he's also just kind of a team player as well, instead of a, a selfish guy on the court at times, which can be frustrating when you're that big and phys- can be that physically dominant at times. But he said he can come to Cleveland now. I think this is a fresh opportunity for him. I think that's more than evidently clear with how things end in Chicago, but um from what I gather, the Bulls were hell bent and determined not to trade him, and Cleveland really wanted him. 
Um, they didn't want Larry Nance Jr. for him. They didn't want Larry Nance Jr. in a second round pick. They didn't want Larry Nance Jr. at all, which still befuddles me on what the Bulls are trying to do. Because I think Larry Nance Jr. would be so good in Chicago, especially with Lonzo Ball now there and Vucevic. And that, that's a, that's an that's a story for another day. But Larry's in Cleveland now. He is excited to play JV Bickerstaff. He has not really met with any of the coaches what he said one of the coaches asked him to shoot it a while in a practice they had and then open runs he's been getting to know jared allen and mobley and lamar and isaac and um it's just i'm interested to see where this goes uh i kind of get the vibe and impression he may start at the four to begin the year but he's totally okay with coming off the bench if mobley just kind of supersedes him or if cleveland changes directions but I know I mentioned Lamar, him making Lamar Stevens' life easier. I think he's going to make Kevin Mobley's life easy, even easier to start things out, too, because Lowry can technically play the five as well if you want to keep Mobley at the four, but he provides spacing to allow Mobley to operate better until Mobley's shot becomes a little bit more of a regular thing. Yeah, I would be a little surprised if he plays meaningful minutes at the five because like he's just not like built to defend any kind of fives. Oh, like no. I would try like Mobley Mobley is like rail thin and I would trust him defending like a bulkier big more than I would trust <laughs> Larry Market. Um, like it's it and again, like the Cavs just I don't think the Cavs like have the personnel to like even like go like who if they if they were to play like Lowry at the five and go like small, like is it like Okoro Steve like is it like Okoro one of the wings and then Sex and Garland? It's just like bizarro stuff. This roster is so bizarre. Um Oh, it's just a bunch of small guards and big men and a couple wings sprinkled in between. So, yeah, it's a weirdly constructed roster. Yeah, I think my and take was in the in their yeah. feels that they're a tier three team in NBA 2K22. But I played with the Cavs a little bit and play now in NBA 2K22, and I fully understand why they're a tier three team and why the Lakers are going to be a video game in real life and are really fun in a video game. Um. I think the Lowry thing is just you take away like, look, he, I, I think it's on the Cavs to kind of maybe be a better fit for him. And I think that's sort of, you read between the lines of what he said, that's what he said. What did, what did you take away from, from what Rubio had to say? I just felt like Rubio is like when he's, I had heard this from folks in Minnesota as well, but like when he's willing to sort of engage and talk, like he's a very well-spoken, thoughtful guy and he's not going to mm-hmm. uh, really, really BS around what he's kind of feeling. And that, that was kind of the vibe I got from, from his media availability. Yeah, I got that vibe too. I think he was under the impression that Minnesota was going to trade him to a contending team. And um, he was a little surprised that he ended up in Cleveland. But he seems like he is at the point in his career where he's going to make the most of being a part of a losing situation or a winning situation because he was with a pretty okay Phoenix team and a very solid Utah team before that. But I thought it was interesting to note that he kind of knows at this point in his career, he's not really a starting point guard unless it is for a contending team. I think he would start for a few few of the contenders in the East and the West, but I mean, unless they're locked to point guard, obviously. But I thought it was interesting to note that he really wants to make it his mission to, like he had a good point where Darius Garland had a very good season last year in his sophomore campaign, but he couldn't stay healthy. And he said the hardest thing is, is to follow up that very good season and be even better the following year. And he's like, my job is to make sure Darius is at that point in terms of playmaking or defense or shooting or scoring or just being the leader on the both on and off the floor for this team. He's like, I've worked with Devin Booker. I've worked with Donovan Mitchell. Last year, I worked with Anthony Edwards. Like, I have had all these stops with all these young players who I think can be truly great. And he gets the impression, at least, that Darius can be one of those players. And I think... That speaks volumes, but I think that's also how the Cavs feel about Darius as well. Uh huh. Just, just, just saying, folks. Just we, we know where this. We, we've been saying this for a while. That, uh, yeah, this is yeah, the Darius, Darius Garland. Garland. He can stay healthy. This is Darius Garland's team. This is yeah. This is a Garland well, Mobley. It's, it's a Garland yeah, it's Garland a Mobley yeah. future with Allen and Sexton. Hap- well, Allen is here, but Sexton. Allen, Sex- Allen, Sexton, and Okora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, they're, they're, they're the I- complimentary pieces. And when I was transcribing this, the quote that stood out to me was, "I'm going to read the the I'm going to read I'm going to read the first part of this, and then um I'll you people can find it and read about it." But so he said, "Quote: I know Cleveland has a young roster. I'm probably not a good collaboration on that because I'm already in my 30s, but I think there's a lot of talent that doesn't make a good team. What makes a good team is putting the piece together and and make it work. As a veteran, it's part of my job to make that work. Seeing where and how the young talent has to sacrifice something for the team." Um, he kind of talked about like it's the role thing that I think we've we spoke yeah. acknowledging him about. I and think then, like everyone is fun doing the role. Like, he, he's like, I have to work with the 15th guy and make sure that he is the best 15th man for this team. 
Like that's yes. I don't know. But it's a lot of veteran raw raw mm-hmm. speak, but it's also refreshing it, to hear as well. It, it, a number one, I think it absolutely matters. I believe that mm-hmm. I, I know people will blah blah culture, winning salsa. I think like you there there's a little bit of the chicken of the egg stuff, but I think like having that stuff actually does matter. The question I think that it becomes is like when Rubio's like, I thought I was getting a trade to contender, I'm in my thirties. I know this isn't a long-term partnership. Like it's very possible that Rubio's like, this is one year and out that this is to the trade deadline and out. Yeah. I'll be curious to see what his patience is because Minnesota was at least an organization where he knew, even if some of the people at the top had changed, right? Like even if like Gerson Rojas wasn't like, right. That's what I'm saying. There was familiarity with the organization. Utah is like a pretty well-run organization. Uh, David Locke did not pay me to say that, but <laughs> it's true. Um, they, they've had developed like a pretty sustainable culture there. Phoenix was obviously like a little different, but they were in the process of trying to maybe turning things around a little bit there, um, as he was there. And then, you know, this is where he is now. I don't, this is just a different, there, there's some DNA pieces of these organizations that I believe are a little bit different. I don't think the Cavs are exactly like even what Minnesota was last year, just because of the familiarity. I'm curious to see, like, I don't expect Rubio to like be a really bad vibe at any point. No, the trouble playing bingo at home. Like Chris said the word vibe, so check that off in your lockdown Cavs bingo board. But I'll be curious to see like what his patience level sort of is here, right? Like I'll be curious to see if like they are if things are awkward and it's like a two and twelve start or whatever, or there's like a ten game losing streak. Like like I mean they had a couple of those last year. Let's remind you, and this isn't exactly like a roster that has on paper improved a ton in in terms of. It'll bring, it's it's all based on internal improvement. I'll be very curious to see like what his sustained sort of interest in doing some of the chemistry stuff and and some of that is and how fast like how if it's a short time if it can be a good time as as much as I think the Cavs are kind of hoping here. I think that is one of the big questions that when I read what he's saying, um, I I think he was pretty honest about it and that it's hard. And like, I'll be curious to see how far this can really go. I I don't think we know yet, obviously, but I think that's really what I took away from Rubio. Yeah, I think as long as the Ricky Rubio experience is a positive one, that is a win in itself. I I have a feeling it's going to be because he doesn't strike me as a player who's going to be uh, striking open descent in the locker room. Granted, he was talking about how excited he was to play with Kevin Love again. So Kevin Love could, you know, be uh, be the uh, devil on the shoulder here. For, for for one Ricky Rubio. I thought it was really sweet, I guess, if you want to put it that way, that um, he's like, oh, I was on a boat on vacation and Kevin called me, so I have to call him back. I just remembered I have to do that, like they're dating or something like that, or like long-lost lovers that are reconnecting. So I'm honestly surprised the Cavs haven't tried to market more of this like Rubio love situation. Maybe they actually didn't like each other in Minnesota and Rubio was just well, a really it's, nice guy. It, it's a little too awkward to like do that when like the well, Kevin Love vibes are. Did, actually, I mean, like, the Glenn Taylor did pay Ricky Rubio before he would ever pay Kevin Love. Well, yeah, that's so. part of yeah, yeah. There's also just like if you like, I just felt really bad for the Cavs social team last week because like I, every time I like I check Twitter for like one moment and then I'd see like one of the Ka- Kevin Love Player Week tweets and then every response was just like this a guy like get him out of here like it the, the Kevin Love vibes are like at an all time low. So, oh well, like I don't I don't know. It's like Kevin Love's gonna see all these tweets, but. They're they're gonna be really good dinner buddies though. I feel like the did Rubio seen, Kevin Le- did you the Rubio Kevin Love dinner buddies gonna be a thing. He, the what was did you see the Blake Griffin podcast where he like more or less shared that he read every single thing Pistons fans were saying about him online and he just carried Dude, it with him every single M- step of the way. NBA players are so online. You gotta people though. I think that Ke- people like look at Kevin Durant as like an example. Like athletes see this stuff and uh oh, they see all of it. Larry Nance Jr. I know for a fact searches up his name on Twitter all the time to see what people are saying about him, and then he'll rant and he's done it to me a few times out of context. We'll snipe your tweets if he wants to drag you, Theodore ask if you will, but. Um, why are you just Evan? Stop! No more bad vibes, okay? We're, we're, we're bringing harmony. I'm here to scrap. It's the glasses, <laughs> Chris. I'm like you now. Chucking, chucking proper twelve on the VMA's carpet at Machine Gun Kelly. Just really tough stuff. I heard some gross stuff about Machine Gun Kelly over the weekend. So I don't know how I feel about him anymore. His some of the stuff he said about Kylie Jenner a few years ago is really icky. So we're. Okay, we're, we're I'm I, I'm moving, hitting a jack on this. We're, we're no, we're done. We're done. This has been locked on Cavs for. Oh, hasn't been. I just want to say I'm excited no, to see how Ricky Rubio works out. I think it's a lot of money to pay a backup point guard, but 
I think it's the one addition other than other than Evan Mobley. I'm genuinely excited to see happen because Ricky Rubio is a very good playmaker, and I think he's going to make every other player on Cleveland's roster life a hell of a lot easier. Fair. All right. Now hitting eject locked on cast for Tuesday, December 14th. I'm Chris. He's Evan. Peace. Find us on Twitter, wherever, or find us on wherever you get your podcast. Please hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And uh, there's Chris's handle for the camera there configurations go. in real time. And so. uh, we'll be back later in the week. TBD on exactly what the schedule is. We're figuring some of that out, but uh, we'll talk to everyone soon. Again, hit that subscribe button and go check out Locked on Browns because uh, Jeff Floyd's killing it as the Brown season gets going. I just want to, you know, share some love there. Everyone be well.